Warning. Channel Robozoid contains adult language, adult content, strong opinions, and verbal brutality. Viewer discretion is advised. Catholic kid growing up in an area where we didn't like Catholic didn't get along. I'm the first president to elect elected statewide in the state of Delaware when I was a kid. Well, you know, I was I looked at John Kennedy and said, Well, he God, he got elected. Why can't I get elected? By the way, I'm proud to be as I said, the first vice president First black woman uh -huh. to serve with a black president. Uh -huh. I'm proud of the the first black woman in the Supreme Court. There's just so much that we can do because together we there's nothing look, this is the United States of America. What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? Throw me a freaking bone here. <laughs> Hello, fellow patriots, and also other Americans out there as well. I'm glad we could get together on this day after the 4th of July, the day after America's birthday. It is I, the Robozoid, your semi-likable and occasionally tolerable curmudgeon of the YouTube airwaves. Uh, first let me apologize for my attire. I know some of you really like it when I'm dressed up, but it's so damn hot here today in North Carolina that... I just had to wear only a tank top. That, that's how bad it is. It's nearly 100 degrees here. Anyway, let's talk about this. Uh, apparently, even now, CNN is admitting that they were wrong. They were absolutely wrong. Biden does have cognitive problems. Uh, and maybe we think it should be time for him to either take a cognitive test, you know, take one of those kind of memory here, memory tests, or just drop out of the race altogether. I mean, yeah, you're going to have some pundits, of course, on some of the other channels, like uh, PMSNBC and maybe C-SPAN, I guess, and maybe even a few on Fox, on Fixed News, I should add, uh, that are going to say, oh, he's fine. He doesn't have any cognitive problems. He's absolutely as fit as a fiddle. He's as, uh, he's basically as uh, sharp as a tack. Sure he is. But let's face it, you know and I know, and even CNN is now starting to admit, Biden needs to take a test. He needs to take a cognitive test to prove that he's still got all of his marbles together. And that's what, and that's what uh, a lot of these interviews and footage here are going to show, I think. So let's take a look at some of it. House Press Secretary saying Biden was seen by his doctor days after the debate. He get, did not get checked out by the doctor. It's a cold, guys, it's a cold. And I know that uh, Liar! it affects everybody differently. We have all had colds. Uh, and so, no, he was not checked by the doctor. A White House official tells CNN Biden had a, quote, brief check, not a physical, after the debate. And now appealing directly to black voters in a pair of new interviews. And a bad night. And the fact of the matter is that, uh, you know, uh, it was, I, I, I screwed up. I made a mistake. That's 90 minutes on stage. Look at what I've done in 3.5 years. Biden, even telling Democratic governors gathered at the White House Wednesday, his plan is to stop scheduling events after 8 p.m. so he can get more sleep. The White House's evolving reasons for Biden's bad debate is evolving. also raising eyebrows. In private, Biden has acknowledged... I don't know how to, de I don't know how to tell you this, guys, in the news media, but... Evolution doesn't really work that way. It doesn't happen overnight, nor does it happen in the space of a couple of weeks. It takes a long, long time to evolve. This was something that even Pawn Vanity had to learn the hard way. ...that the next few days are critical, packed with a high-profile interview and two stops in... Serious? So there was the media making up their typical excuses, maybe not so much, but uh, quite frankly, it was pretty much true. Uh, Biden was probably jet lagged, but nevertheless, the guy had 13 days, you know, from the time that he got back from France to the time of the debate. That's 13 days. That's more fingers than I have on my hands, or any of us for that matter. But nevertheless, I would think that 13 days is just enough recovery time to get your marbles together, to get your shit together, and quite frankly, well, be up and cognitive and ready and prepared for something as crucial as a presidential debate. So I'm not buying the excuse, okay? I'm just not buying into it at all. 
No, Biden had plenty of time. And don't give me the jet lagged excuse. I don't want to hear the, uh, I don't want to hear that he had a cold. I don't care about any of that. That's Those are just excuses from the apologist, from the chief apologist, uh, the White House press apologist, KJP Stain. So I don't need to hear any more of those excuses. But the truth is, Biden did an interview shortly after the debate where he just seemed very, very confused about what he was or what he's supposed to be. He thought at one point that he was a black president, the nation's first black president, uh, which would have been Obama, who, by the way, was actually racially mixed. And uh, he was the first black vice president, which I guess obviously he had uh, the hyena on his mind. Hyena. Hyena, hyena on my mind. Okay, that's enough of that. But even though I played it at the top of the video, let's rerun that again, just for absolute clarity. When I was a kid. Well, you know, I was. I looked at John Kennedy and said, well, he, God, he got elected. Why can't John I get elected? Candy? By the way, I'm proud to be, as I said, the first vice president, the first black woman, mm -hmm. served with a black president. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know who you are? Black woman in the Supreme Court. There's just so much that we can do because together we, there's nothing. Look, this is the United States of America. Stupid! You're so stupid! Oh, Biden meant to say John F. Kennedy. He wasn't talking about John Candy because that's how it came out to me. I don't know about you, but quite frankly, I couldn't make head nor tail of it. Uh... If only Pat Sajak hadn't retired from Wheel of Fortune, I'd say I need to buy a vowel, Pat. But quite frankly, I don't know what the hell he was saying there. Uh, I just didn't get it. I, uh, never mind. Let's just play this next clip and move on. This is almost portraying this interview as a cognitive test. Like it's some sort of televised doctor's appointment. Wasn't the this White guy House fired? The campaign have raised the stakes for this interview as if it was not already important enough. So it is both the most important interview of, of the interviewer's career, Stephanopoulos, but most importantly for Biden. As you said, his presidency wow. is on the... Brian, here's a good idea for you. The next time you get fired from CNN, make sure you stay fired. The line here, and yet at the same time, it's only one interview. It's not nearly enough uh, compared to what Biden has to do more broadly to prove to the country that he's fit for service. Now, supposedly, there's going to be another interview between George Stepan All of Us and Biden, but I don't think it really matters because who the hell's going to watch it? Sure, there probably might be a few people who will watch it, but it's a small number because people just don't trust CNN anymore. Uh, so, quite frankly, I don't think that it's going to go over that well and how many minds are going to be changed from that. Uh, even the few people who do watch CNN, who probably might take a look at this from probably the biggest softball interview ever, interviewer ever and just say, why, why isn't George cornering old Joe with tough questions? Ah, here's the answer to that. The answer is nobody believes that Joe can handle those questions anymore because he'll just probably word salad his way out of it and try to, I don't know, pro probably try to gaslight everybody, as many voters as he possibly can. You know, I thought, well, well we're, we're, uh, we're working on the, uh, because you know, the, global, the climate change, which is affecting uh, the, the world gratefully. And uh, well, anyway, um, that's just what's going to happen. So let me just say that if George, if, Sorry, if Joe slips up like that again, he's done. It's over. He's finished. He's toast. He's baloney without the mayo. He's, he's done. Um, and there's already talk about Joe possibly making an announcement of stepping down effectively on Monday morning. Uh, I don't know if that's true yet, but I have heard some chatter about it. And uh, I guess we'll try to keep you posted. And I'll, I don't think I'll be one of the first to break that story, but... If it does break, I will break that story, whether you've already heard it or not. This has been the Robozoid saying, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, and you better have, I want you to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, make absolutely certain you're still subscribed because YouTube is up to the same old tricks as they always are. 
Also, if you have trouble with YouTube, well, you can always check me out over on Rumble. Again, I apologize for my attire. I know I shouldn't be wearing, I should wear more than just a tank top, but it is very, very hot here. Also, of course, remember that wokeness is weakness, something that I think everybody knows. Uh, even Baldy Brian Selter here, who I actually have to agree with here, just for once. For once, a broken clock is right, I suppose. So, um, also remember that we'll also remember that we've got to have the power to the people, uh, which of course includes the power to the music in the streets, and that is basically our voices just being heard. That's all we want, just to be heard, to let the, um, the to let the lamestream media know there is an opposing point of view that should not be silenced. Remember to be here or be absolutely nowhere.